Welcome. It's Tuesday, December 4th already. We still have some wonderful time in December to make a big splash. And this morning, we're going to head that direction. We've got a training this morning with our good buddy, Bill Predamon. Uh, what an opportunity we've got to learn from somebody who not only can see opportunities and recognize them, but he acts on them. And, you know, acting is is it's just all the difference that it takes. Here's someone, he sees an opportunity and he goes for it and it makes a difference in his life. It makes a difference in the lives of other people. And he is here today acting again and being with us to train us and help us to be the best we can be and to make a good difference in the rest of 2018. Good morning, Bill. How are you? Ron, my friend, can you hear me okay? You sound great, Bill. Well, that's good news. That's good news. That's a, that's a much better picture of me that you have up right now. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> good, too. That's funny. Um, thanks again for all you do, Ron. Thanks for putting this together. Thanks for checking in with me every morning to see if I'm ready. And, uh, and uh, I just really appreciate your leadership and your dedication, your commitment. And I know that everybody else does on this call. And uh, obviously, we couldn't do it without you. And... Uh, Hopefully uh, everything's going well with your fix and flip. I know it's a learning experience, but I hope you're doing well there. And uh, just keep it up, my friend. Thank you so much for everything. Right on. All right. I guess we are getting ready to start here. <clears throat> Welcome, everybody. Um, we're a little light. I don't know what that. I don't know what that indicates. But uh, if you if you happen to know someone who is not on the call. Uh, you know, like Michael says, uh, and Christian, um, no one left behind. If you guys uh, know IMA is left behind, if you want to text your group, your team, um, and let them know that we've started the call, that's awesome. The more people we can have on the call, the better. I'm going uh, to throw in my cell phone into the uh, um, chat there so you guys can have that if you want it um, for any questions. I will tell you this. I've got a few ideas for today um, for this training, but um, you know, it's not a, a full hour uh, necessarily. Um, it always can be, but um, uh, I left some space in there for any topics you guys want to talk about. And to be honest, uh, it's more important to me, I believe, um, you know, that you guys get the training that you're looking for and that you want to hear about. So literally if there is something that um, is on your mind that I can help you with that, has to do with real estate and, and the marketing, uh, the marketing in particular, or, um, you know, working with a guest. Um, I have a few things that I'll go over in the meantime, but, uh, you know, if there's something that, that is important to you that you would like to talk about, um, then, you know, those, those chats are, are, are even better. They're, they're definitely the way that would make more sense. And then I think, uh, you know, if there's something on your mind, uh, most likely it's on someone else's mind, as you probably know this, and, um, and it would benefit everybody. Uh, I think that, you know, the first thing I want to say is uh, give a good shout out to, uh, to Chris White. I think he did an amazing job last year, last year, last week on the call, um, filling in. I mean, just uh, had, a, he brought a lot of energy and a lot of, um, just a lot of positive thoughts. And, um, you know, he prepared and, and I just think he did a great training. You know, there's a lot of great leaders and, and you guys are all are, are, are right up there with him, you know, across the country. And so for someone like that, he just stepped in and, and took control and, and just did a great job. So thanks, Chris. Uh, yeah. Keely says Chris was awesome. So I agree. Um, I just want to give him a shout because, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, it, it, was, it was beneficial. I'm sure a lot of people on the call got a lot from that. Um, right on. Again, if you guys have anything um, that's, that's important to you, uh, I, I definitely suggest you get on the, get on the um, just type it in the chat or, or come off mute and, and, uh, and let me know what you want to hear about. So with that, I had, um, I had someone the other day, um, asked me, uh, we were doing a one-on-one -on -one follow up and, um, and it went well, we enrolled her in the, uh, in the financing, 
Um, we enrolled her as an IMA. It was their first uh, enrollment sale uh, for their um, for their journey. Uh, they've only been with us a couple of months and uh, just an awesome couple. Um, and this was a Craigslist ad. And um, towards the end of the meeting, my, uh, my IMA, uh, a friend of mine, she asked me, um, how do you do both? And I, I, I got to get back on, on the phone with her and talk to her, but we ran out of time. And I was just about to answer her when, um, when we were, something else came up. And so uh, I started thinking about that question. And, um, and I think it's a really good question. How about, okay, here's Chuck. Uh, how about approaching and talking to people about this opportunity? Okay. So, um, wow, that's a loaded question. Let's see. How, what's, which, how do I pick that question out of there? Let's see. Well, I, number one is Chuck and everybody else is obviously there's a lot of different ways to do that. And there's a lot of different ways to, um, get the training on that from the 10 step training to the super Saturday training to, uh, these calls and stuff like that. So, um, you know, and it, it's going to depend on your lead as to who you're talking about, but here's, here's my general thought. You guys, I think this is, uh, just super key, uh, in anything. Um, although we want to approach people and although we want to share this opportunity with people. Um, and, and even Woody kind of mentioned this last night on his training a little bit. Um, there has to be a certain way that we approach anybody. And I don't care if they're warm market, cold market, um, already a lead source, whatever. And it has to be, it has to be on their terms. It has to be their idea and it has to be about them. I mean, literally people don't, care about you. Um, <laughs> and I mean that, I mean that as best I can. So let's elaborate a little bit on this, you guys. And, and I, I know this, and this I think has really helped me get to where I am in the marketing is that, um, you know, if we, if we, if we begin a conversation or even have conversations, even if we don't start it this way, but we start to talk at somebody by saying, you know, I have this opportunity um, I want to share, like if you get a, if you get a LinkedIn um, message from somebody, LinkedIn always says, hey, I wanted to let you know that this is what I do and this is how I can help you. And that's all great. Like the intention is really there, but it, you're like, ah, you know what I mean? That's what you want to do. How do you know that's what I want to do, right? That's what you want to tell me. That's you want to do this for me. You want to do that for me. And it's all about what that person wants, not what I want. And it's the same thing when you approach somebody. If we're like, oh my God, you would be perfect for this. Oh my God, have you ever, you know, um, real estate is so hot. Um, I've got this great opportunity. You could make money. You could quit your job. Um, you could go this way. You could go that way. Like all of these things are true and all of these things will work, but, but it's about what you think and about what you want and about what you believe and not about them. And the way to approach someone is they have to, they have to be intrigued. Michael talks about intrigue all the time. They have to be interested and they have to, um, I, I can't say have to, it's not, it's not an all or nothing, but you know, I think it's, I think you have a better chance at converting someone to moving them into the pipeline with when they decide for themselves that they want to look at the opportunity you have to share with them. So what I mean by that is, you know, when you're talking about something, anytime we do a call to action, it's our call to them to take action, not the other way around. And so again, it becomes our idea. Now, if you think about the Thursday night meeting, you've already got someone at the Thursday night meeting. And so when we do a call to action at the end of the meeting, um, that call to action is to somebody who's already wanted to see the information, right? But if we're, if we haven't engaged with somebody and we're on Facebook or we're out in the world and we are like, Hey, come check out this opportunity. You know, if you're interested in finding about real estate, uh, give me a call. If you want to make more money from home, give me a call. And, and, you know, after you make a post on Facebook or something like that, or, or you're having conversation and that's great. 
but it's a turnoff. Okay. It, because it's, it's like, oh, that's why they said what they said in the first place. So what I mean by this is like, even in my, in my ad on Craigslist, um, the majority of the bulk of the, of the body of the ad is questions. You know, have you ever thought about doing real estate and don't know where to start? Maybe you've gotten into real estate before and it didn't work out or you want to you do a little bit more real estate. Or perhaps you're just missing the one element in real estate, um, someone that you can work with side by side, um, having experience of other, um, using experiences of other real estate investors, right? And, and if, that's what you, if that's what you're looking for, then I am, I am looking to build my team. Um, I'm looking for uh, partners in real estate or whatever it is that I say in my ad, right? So obviously they're out looking for it, but it's not like it's, the ad is not a, a big call to action. The ad is more about intrigue. It starts to get the person to think about what they're, what they're looking for and what they want. And it's not about what I want, right? It's not like, hey, I'm looking to build my team. I'm looking for someone who's solid and who's, who's a nine out of 10. And you know, I really want someone who's, who's motivated and self-starter and can work from home. And if you wanna quit your job, and that's what I'm looking for. And, and that, that's all about me. That's all about me. And it sounds good, but at the end of the day, every, every job offer out there is about what the job is looking for. We're looking for someone with this kind of experience and this kind of motivation and this kind of thing and this and that and then blah, 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 blah. And, and that's great. And I guess it works for recruiters. But I think that in any time you talk to somebody and you approach talking to anybody out about this, especially warm market, um, it has got to be about them. And it has got to be about where they are. And if you think about this, I do this for real estate. Um, and part of this training is going to be um, about doing Okay. It's about doing real estate with Mark. Your elbow in my back and it hurts. Oh, sorry. Oh, my back hurts too. Actually, I got to get a massage. Honestly, um, I'm going to get a couple this week. So um, what I mean is um, when it comes to real estate, um, real estate is about the individual. Real estate is about the seller. So, I have a friend, um, he's an investor partner of mine, and he teamed up with another investor here in town. And Paul is a sophisticated, uh, wealthy investor. Um, in fact, he's at one point, I don't know, just millions of dollars, right? And so Paul has um, several fix and flip projects going on right now, and he's starting a door company, and he started a handyman store, and he is, um, and he is uh, just all over the place. And he's got this house. And so my investor partner called me and said, hey, Bill, here's this house. Um, and gave me the details. And he's like, would you go look at this? You know, Paul doesn't have the time to finish it. You know, he's got, you know, X amount of dollars into it. This is where it was, blah, blah, blah. So we started competent and stuff. And I started looking at it. And I didn't take it that seriously because most of the time you're not going to get a good deal from an investor right? They want too much. They're into it for too much, whatever. Um, and so long story short is I went and I looked at the property and I've done some comps on the property and, and at the price that he was looking for, there, there wasn't really a deal. So I gave Paul a call and I started listening to him and I asked some questions, right? Naturally, you know, what's going on. And, and most people, I don't care what their sophistication level is, where it is, they want to talk about themselves. They want to talk and explain. And that's exactly what he did. And, and trust me, I mean, this guy's got more money than me from what I can tell. And, uh, you know, has been doing this longer than I have and, and has a lot going on. And, um, and so, you know, I'm thinking, you know, you know, to me, he's, he's someone I would look up to as an investor, right? And so yet he still wanted to explain the situation with this house. And so he's telling me all about where he's got it, what he's going to do to it, where he's at, you know, and, and without, without me asking many more questions at all, in fact, none, um, you know, he started saying, you know, I'd be willing to, to do anything with this deal. He's like, I just don't have the time or the resources to be honest. I got seven, pro you know, he's telling me his story and um, you know, this is what I think I could do. And, you know, and I would ask a few questions about, you know, does he have the tile guy and what's he got the tile guy ready to do? And he's like, I already paid up on the, on the electric and this and that. And then, um, 
and he basically just let me know that he's he's open to just about anything. And then his partner Lou, which is my other partner, I call him up, and Lou starts saying, "Listen, I, I'm almost to the point where I think that you know I really I'm 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 in deep with this guy. I really I I you know I know that he doesn't need this house and." And he's willing to probably, you know, if you could take the take it over and manage the project and finish it and put in the rest of the money for the fix up, um, you know, you could get paid first. Like basically, no matter what the house sells for, you would take no loss. You would get all your principal back and you just state how much money you want to make in the deal. And we pay out that money first and then he'll get the rest. So at least the project gets done and it gets sold and, and he can move on versus losing money. Now he's got it, you know, he's into it. This, he had to refinance it um, just to keep it going and stuff like that. So all of a sudden what came, what wasn't a deal um, at all for me is now if I put in 25 grand or 30 grand to fix this house up. Um, and I, when I do that, I typically want to make a dollar for dollar for every flip I do. The more money I put in, I don't have to make exactly a dollar. But if I'm going to put 20 grand into a house, I want to estimate that I can screw up and still make 20 grand. Does that make sense? So I put in 20, I get 40 out. Um, so in this case, if I'm going to put in 25 or 30 grand, I'm going to run this job. I'm going to throw all my guys on there. I'm going to drive to this house all the time and add it to my list of projects that I got going on. Then what do I want to make? I want to make 20 to 30 grand, right? So right off the bat, I can say, listen, I calculate, I keep track of my expenses. I, I make the, I make the payments on the, on the loan and, um, and I put in this money as a risk, but even if we only sell it for 450, then the first, um, the first amount of money comes out is going to be my principal. And the second amount of money is going to be my guaranteed interest, my guaranteed profit. And then if there's profit above that, then that's his profit. And then the rest of the, he gets his money back. Right? So it, it, it becomes a, a, a really easy, no risk deal for me if I want to take the time and try to finish someone else's project and help out my buddy Luke, who's my one of my investor partners. So the point is, is that when you're talking to people um, and you are having conversations about this opportunity, uh, you know, Michael and Christian talk, talk about this all the time. You have to listen, right? You have to be able to ask a question and shut up and listen. And, and most of the time, in my opinion, when I train my team and stuff like that, and we talk about stuff like this, um, the idea to come to the meeting, the idea to, um, you know, watch a webinar, the idea to do a follow-up, in my opinion, needs to be their idea. Although we're suggesting it, it becomes their idea. So let me give you an example. Um, when I'm talking to somebody and I, they're on a Craigslist ad, cold lead, and they call and they say, hey, Bill, uh, I'll call them up and I'm like, hey, you know, um, Keely, this is Bill. Uh, you called off my ad on Craigslist. You know, do you have a couple minutes? Uh, yeah, I, um, um, I, you know, I called a lot of ads. Okay, no worries, no worries. I'll, I'll let you, you know, we'll, we'll figure it out. Um, do you remember an ad uh, about real estate investing on a Craigslist? And, and yeah, I think so. But, you know, there were a couple of them I responded to. I'm like, cool. Listen, mine said, if you didn't make 10 grand last month, call me. And then I started talking about asking you some questions about whether or not you wanted to get into real estate. You know, if you thought about real estate, but was looking for, oh, I remember, I remember. You're the guy, uh, you, you, you mentioned about, you know, working with other people and people with experience and, and how you're a local real estate investor and you could help me out. Exactly. Okay, cool. Listen, Keely, um, tell me a little bit about what it is that you saw in the ad. What did you, what did you see? What, what, what caught your eye? What made you make the call? You know, what is it you're doing right now? Uh, for a living, you know, what got you into real estate? Why, why real estate? So right there, I asked several questions all at once. And you've heard me say this before. But when you do that, it will allow somebody, in my opinion, to tell you what they want to tell you that's on their mind. They've got something on their mind and, they're gonna, and, and it, it allows them to go whichever direction they want. And so the only thing I'm looking for when I talk to people is the ability for me to bring a solution to a problem and then I can make a suggestion to see that solution, right? So um, if she starts to say, well, you know, um, my parents were in real estate and, and I met this one guy and, and I've known him for 10 years now and, you know, he's in business, but he did this real estate deal and he made, you know, his first house he bought was a short sale and it just, ever since then, I've just always been interested in real estate and I just can't, um, I haven't figured out how to get into real estate. You know, I read some books and, you know, I work full time and, 
and I'm, you know, you ask me what I did and, you know, I'm in banking and, and, um, you know, but I, I don't really have a lot of time to do real estate, but I, I just know it's a good place to be. And, 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 uh, and, um, and, and that's, and that's why I call. I'm like, okay, so, you know, you said you knew somebody who's done real estate before. How come you don't call him? Well, you know, he lives out of state and, and, uh, you know, he's off doing his own thing and he's running a business and he's just got, he doesn't have any time for me. And, um, okay, so what's holding you back from, from getting into real estate? Like, why don't you just go out and do real estate? Like, why don't you just go, um, you know, find a deal? Well, I really don't, I really don't know how to do it yet. You know, um, you know, he, he, um, he learned how to do it and, uh, he hasn't been had the time to really teach me yet. And, uh, I just really want to get started in real estate. And, uh, so, so Keely, let me ask you. So it sounds like you're telling me that, you know, basically, you know, you wish this guy was kind of here in town, uh, maybe could work with you personally. You're also telling me that you don't have all the knowledge. Is that true? Yeah. Like, so if you, um, you know, that you don't really know exactly what you're doing, but you kind of have some ideas. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I understand. You know, I'm, I'm pretty smart. I'm in banking and I understand real estate, but I, I really don't know how to go out, you know, really go out and get the deal. So let me ask you this, Keely. Do you think it would benefit you if you could see an environment where, um, you know, where, you know, you and I could work together. I've been doing this for 10 years. You know, I've got some experience, but not just me, but I've got partners that, that you're going to meet that, that um, are also into real estate that could help you um, literally hand in hand and hand in hand and help you. And then also if, you know, if we had some systems in place where you could learn a little bit about doing real estate, so you're not making mistakes and you could do it faster. Um, would you believe that that would be a, a good opportunity for you? Well, of course, that's what I'm, that's why I call. I, I like the ad and, and, you know, I'm looking to learn how to do real estate. So great. So what I suggest is that it sounds like you're telling me you want to come see how to learn how to do that. Is that true? You want to perhaps uh, meet up with me and see what I've got to offer for you? Yeah, that's exactly why I call. Okay, great. So get a pen and paper. This is what we're going to do. We're going to get together on Thursday night up at my office in Scottsdale. And um, I'm going to introduce you to some of my partners, as I said. And then I'm going to show you what it is that I do, how I do it, and how you can do it with me. How does that sound? So right there, you guys, um, that conversation is almost to the T on every single Craigslist ad person that calls me is about them. And I always make it the suggestion, like they're telling me what they want and I just reiterate what they said. I'm like, so it tells me like you want to do this. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Okay. So it's their idea, right? So when we think about warm market and we think about opening this opportunity up to people during the holiday, right? It is the holiday and the whole, and, and Ron tagged this, this training. Um, you still have an opportunity to make a big splash in 2018. And that's true because you don't have to go through your 200 list right now. You're going to go see your 200 list. You're going to go see people this next three weeks at parties, at work. People are festive. People are happy. They're going to be getting out of work. They're going to have time off. They're going to be buying gifts and everybody loves to buy gifts and overspend and give gifts and they love to receive gifts and they get excited and the time is right. Now, what we don't want to do is intrude, right? We don't want to impose um, and we don't want to be awkward. And, and the bottom line is it's awkward. If it wasn't awkward and this was easy, everybody would be making multiple five figures every single month and we would have a million people in Renatus already. So um, all of these trainings that you guys get on, all of the things that you're doing are improving that odds of you being more successful for those 20,000 and, and multiple five figure months. So with that, in order to make it less awkward, um, Chuck, this is an incredible question and it brings up a perfect topic. It has to be about them. If you're sitting down next to a family member, if you're talking to a colleague, if you remember from before on a training I've done, you guys, if I'm, if I'm in state, okay, and in state to me means in the mindset of marketing and I'm at a function where it is a social function, but I want to get a name and number, and, in, and, and ask somebody specifically to go to a meeting, then I have to be on purpose, right? So I have to be listening to the conversation, but I have a few questions in mind that I'm gonna ask that is gonna draw the subject over, the topic over to what I wanna talk about, right? 
So, you know, in my opinion, if you're going to go to these events and your social family gatherings and things like that, and you're going to have a specific conversation with somebody, you've got to be prepared for it. Um, it's, it's, it's not necessarily going to be natural. In fact, I don't think that it, for me, it's natural all the time either. I have to prepare for that conversation. So a lot of times when someone's talking to me and I'm, I've decided that I want to market to them, then I have to do it delicately. And in my head, while I'm listening to them talk, I'm thinking about when I'm going to have an opportunity to bring up a question. Now, with that, that question has to be, um, the conversation has to happen where, in my opinion, they are talking about a need, right? And, and, and Michael, you've heard him say, you know, you know, if you ever, he'll start out with something odd, which it, it works, right? He'll break the ice with, hey, have you ever thought about, you know, paying less in taxes? And the guy's like, yeah, what are you trying to say, right? And then he goes right into it because that's ignorance on fire when he first started out with his family, right? Um, and so there's nothing wrong with that. Um, in fact, it, it works. But the point was he, had a, he was on purpose and he was in state and he wanted to ask that question and he swallowed the nerves and did it. Um, you know, when you're talking to someone, um, we want to be able to um, allow them to speak. So as you're talking about conversation at, at, at the party and the conversation is either leading towards, you're going to steer the conversation towards money or towards real estate or towards anything that we have as a solution. And, um, and you have to have that, that question, the question that, you know, what is it you're going to do for the holidays? Are you, you know, are you overspending or like, let me get a good example. Um, if I was going to do this, um, see, even now I'm trying to <laughs> think about an example of what the question would be. Um, it's a little more difficult cause I'm not in the, I'm not in the conversation, but, um, uh, if I'm going to prepare for this. Um, you know, I want to, I want to ask people, have you ever thought about, um, have you ever seen some of the posts that I have on Facebook? Yeah. Um, have you ever thought about doing what I do? Have you ever wondered what it is that I do? That's kind of, that's kind of, that's not going to work for you guys. Cause some, not everybody's doing what I'm doing. Not, not everybody's doing fix and flip. So, um, that's too personal. Uh, I'm going to get back to this in a minute. Let me, let me continue on with the, the converse, with the, with the, with the thought process. Um, at, at the events that you guys are going to be at, um, that we're going to be at all week, all month long. Um, the, when it comes to, um, getting names and numbers and putting them on your list and inviting them to meetings as they, as they go through in December, um, the main objective is that the conversation is about, what they are looking for and what they want, as I said. So um, if we go back to, um, you know, wanting to share this information with people and, and projecting, uh, guessing how they're feeling or where they are at in life and what, um, and, and, and talking to them at them about what Renatus is or what it is that you're doing, what you found, does that make sense? Like if you're like, oh my God, you got to see this opportunity I found. So let me give you another, here, thank you. I, got, I found my train of thought. So, um, you know, I got, a, I got a message the other day about CBD oil, right? And, and the message was kind of like this. It was like, hey, Bill, um, you know, I don't know if you've ever thought about this, but I put this CBD, I give this CBD oil to my dog and it's been a miracle and, you know, it's been working for him. And, you know, he's, he's since had a more energy and, and whatever it was, it was just this person telling me about this CBD oil and telling me how they're using it on their dogs. So there's the connection, the dogs, you all know, I'm, I'm a, I'm a, I'm an animal freak. And, um, and so I have, I have dogs and, and so there was a relationship there and that if I wanted to, uh, I could reach out to him and he could explain to me, um, how it works on the dog and how good it is for the dog. And, and I should take a look at this link. Okay. And he sent the link over. Now, I'm in the business, so naturally I understand where he's coming from. But there was no intrigue there for me. There was no, um, it was almost, 
and offensive is the wrong word, but it was, you know, it was, he meant well, and I understand what he's trying to do. And I understand that he wants me to buy a CBD oil. And I understand that he believes that his CBD oil is good for my dogs. And trust me, we already use CBD oil, right? It's very good for seizures. And we give it to my dogs all the time. And my wife researches organic, pure CBD oil all the time. Um, and so um, the interest is there, right? But the turnoff is also there because there was no, there was no conversation. There was no ability for me to make it my idea, right? So if the conversation had been, hey, Bill, have you guys ever thought about um, using CBD oil on your, with your dogs? And he just left the conversation at that. I might respond back. Like, this is a warm market friend of mine, right? Through Facebook. And so um, then I might have said, yeah, we already do it. Um, my wife researched it. Okay, cool, cool. Listen, have you, obviously, you know, it's probably working. Have you ever thought about looking at other ones? Do you know? And, and started to ask questions, right? Well, you know, we have had him on the, on the CBD oil for uh, six months now, but he's had two seizures since, um, since we started. Oh my God, I totally get it, right? Not all of them are created equal. In fact, I know that a lot of them out there have less percentage of CBD oil and, and give me a fact. Would, you, would it ever occur to you to, to look for other, other oils? Are you guys still searching around for a better oil? Right. And so I'm like, yeah, actually I am. My wife checks all the time and she, you know, we're looking for, in fact, we just bought one that's, that's like $70 an ounce. Oh my God, you got to check this out. Ours is about $59 an ounce. If it makes sense to you, maybe you'll send this link over to your wife. All of a sudden it's my idea. I can go to my wife and say, Hey, look what I found, you know, and I'm not even researching it. And, and it's a whole different conversation. You guys, it's an entirely different conversation because he engaged and made an interest and it became my idea almost, right? I hope that that example is an, it's, a, it's actually a true live example. Now, because I'm in the industry and I know this guy, I'm gonna go look at his link. In fact, we did. And, and we, we bought it to try it. So it worked, <laughs> let's put it that way. But my point is, there's been many, many and many other people that, um, will approach you or approach me with an idea, something that they're excited about, they, they love, they want, right? And um, let me give you another example. If you just went to a movie and you're stoked about this movie and you might post it on Facebook, right? And you just said, oh my God, I just went to Green Book. Um, I had no idea what that movie was going to be about. And it was just an amazing movie. Um, it, 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 it shocked me to the core, something like that. And you don't, you're not like, Oh my God, go see this movie. Everybody in the world should go see this movie. You just posted about it. You're just like, Oh my God, it was a good movie. Right. And all of a sudden you start to get some comments and in the comments, um, someone's like, Oh, I was looking for a good movie this weekend. And then you reply back and you're like, oh yeah, if you are, I totally suggest this movie, blah, 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 blah. You know, and you start having a little conversation about it and then you tell them a little bit about it and then they're like, cool, we're, I'm gonna ask my husband and we're gonna go, we're gonna go to the movie. Um, but if you post it and, or you, you message your best friend on Facebook and you're like, oh my God, you gotta go to this movie, it's the greatest movie and, um, and it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to rock your world and, and make you really think about the way things used to be and, and prejudice in the world or whatever, right? And then this person is like fighting with their husband and um, is having a really bad day, whatever it is, and you're sitting there suggesting they go to this great movie and, and think about world peace and, and, and equality for all, it's, it's not a good time. <laughs> and they're not interested in the movie and you're trying to tell them how great this movie was and how much fun it is and, and stuff like that. It's... It's, it's not what they want to hear. They're not ready to engage in that conversation with you about a movie, right? The timing's bad or whatever. My point is, is that when we, when we post things in, in life that don't, that have no strings attached, that we're not embarrassed about, that we're not worried about or trying to sell somebody on, we're just going to go out there and post it, right? And then little conversations will come up about it. And then we start to engage in the conversation and we let people know about what we found out about and how it was and we talk a little more detail about it and then we convince them to go or we convince them to do what we, we did 
or we give them an idea for the future so they can think about it and then they have they can have that same experience that you had but it doesn't start with a call to action it doesn't start with oh my god you have to see what i'm doing um we got dressed up and we went to the movie and we went to the mall and then we had dinner and all this and that's not what you do on your post but yet when we have conversation about approaching and talking to people we think in our mind that we have to do all and say all of these things to them about Renatus and about paying off debt and about being in real estate and and talking to them about what it's about and and it's just not it's just not what we have to do it's not it's not what works when we approach people um, we have to approach them as if they're approaching us we have to get it to be where they are the ones telling us what they're looking for and what they want and all we do is provide the solution and the, and the answer and even though it's our idea and even though we're doing it on purpose and we're doing it um, because we want to and we selfishly want to share this information with them um, we have to pretend and wait and create intrigue and create opportunity for ourselves by asking questions and allowing people to tell us what they want and what they're looking for and what they need. Okay. Um, great question. And so with that, I'll, I'm going to um, talk about the, the opportunity that you guys have with Renatus and the rest of the year. And what I think is that like, the marketing and real estate, and you've heard me, they, they obviously go hand in hand. Everybody knows that. Everybody knows the, the wealth cycle uh, that Bob created, earn while you learn, and things like that. And so in my opinion, if you're in a job, um, the job is gonna be replaced by the income. It's gonna be replaced by the marketing. And in the meantime, for most of you, you know, wealth creation is done through buy and hold property, right? It's done through rental property. It's done through uh, multifamily um, and things like that. And so the, the simple formula, I believe, is that if you have a W-2 job, there's a great opportunity for you to get a loan, right? If you could watch the classes in understanding credit and go through credit nerds and, and utilize velocity banking, you can fix your credit pretty quickly, right? You can't, you can't on your own necessarily, uh, unless you're doing a lot of work with the credit bureaus, get things removed from your credit, but you can start to improve your credit. And the credit nerds can go ahead and help you remove things that are negative to your credit so you can get a loan in the future. But you've got a W-2 job. As you start to do velocity banking, you start to improve your credit rating, you start to improve your credit usage, and so therefore your credit might grow a little bit, right? Not only your score, but your credit. Um, you know, as you start to uh, study the classes, you are working at work, um, and you're going to the meetings, fixing your credit, velocity banking, um, raising private money, um, uh, starting to analyze property, learn how to comp property. Those are not money making real estate activities. Okay. They're, they're setting you up to make money in real estate. But in my opinion, if you have a job, um, and you are, and you are looking at those classes and you're preparing for the future for when you can do real estate, um, the money uh, comes from the marketing. And if you want to get out of your job, or you, you have to pay down debt, the marketing is the way to do that, right? Like if you think about it and you have kids and you have a life and you have some fun things that you like to do and then you have a job, fix and flip and wholesaling are a business that makes it a little bit more difficult. Now they are an ordinary income type of job. They are, they are a, a real estate strategy that will make you money, um, you know, lease options and then wrap the mortgage and sell it off as a, as a higher rental or whatever, and you can cash flow it. There's lots of different little strategies that you can do in real estate, but it takes time and effort to find the leads, right? And if you find a fix and flip and you have a full-time job, then you're going to have to fix and flip and manage the project from the phone away from work and then go to the house after work and spend time there on the weekend. 
or you better have a project manager or a, pro, or, a pro, or a partner that can take care of it while you're at work. It makes it more difficult. But in the meantime, you can run a full-time, part-time rather, marketing business from your office, from your job, and from the car, in the commute, on, on nights and weekends, because that's when we have events, right? And that can bring you uh, relatively quickly a $10,000 paycheck, right? And from there, you can use that for debt. And in the meantime, um, you are studying the classes that make sense for you for the future. When you get out of your job and or you reduce your job down to part-time or to you, you switch jobs where it's more convenient for you to be out in the field during the day, whatever that is, when that happens, then you'd have more time to be able to get into a fix and flip right? Or start getting into wholesaling or lease options and things like that. But if you can prepare yourself to learn how to buy property with other people's money by raising private money, even if it's small amounts, 10, 20 grand to do a subject to, to catch up someone's mortgage and, and, and move them on their way with a, with a, small, um, a small offering for their equity, you can step into someone's house and own a rental property if you do it right. And that is where wealth creation comes in. And that is where um, your story comes in, right? And if you're looking for a story for the marketing, right, you've got stories in the, in the community. And again, it's always going to be about the person and not about you. They may want to know what you have done. And if, they, if you haven't done a deal, you're going to buy into the excuse that, you know, let me know when you get this, you know, how this works for you. And when you get a deal done, and, and then I'll consider it, right? And that's basically just an excuse, and I know all of you know this. But, you know, if you're working with folks that are in your sphere of influence, most likely they're in the same situation that you're in or have been in, right? Which means that their credit might not be good. Their job is not their favorite job. Their situation is they don't own a rental. They probably don't use Velocity Banking. They probably don't work on their credit, right? all of these different things. So if those are some of the things that you're doing and you're able to share that information with them, then you become a little bit of a success. You are having success and you are having things work for you that normally you wouldn't have done without Renatus. So they're gonna relate to the same things that you're relating to, right? And so there's an opportunity. When you bring someone that's really doing okay and they're not in need of money necessarily or they have good credit, and they want to do real estate in the fix and flip market, and they want to do real estate in the buy and sell, and you bring them to an event, then it will no longer be about you. It'll be about the testimonies they see and whether or not they feel that this would be a place that they could do it, right? But in the meantime, the marketing, I'm getting back to the point where how do you do both? Depending on your situation and your resources, the, the, you really can't do one or the other, in my opinion. It, it can't be one or the other. It's always both, right? Um, and, and when you're in the job, the marketing um, is about approaching folks that um, are in the same situation that you were in. There's a reason that you joined Renatus, right? And that same reason is why someone else is going to join Renatus. And if you go back to what it is that got you into it and what you were looking for in the first place, that's how we want to approach folks. So, all right, I've got 855. Um, uh, Chuck, I really appreciate the question because it gave me, a, gave me an idea of where to go with, with that. And I think it was, uh, I think it was um, appropriate for the, for the holidays and the time being. Um, is there any other thoughts or questions or comments that anybody wants me to touch on before we wrap up? Um, if you have it, you can chat. So here's what I have. Um, I can tell you that what I did, you guys, for the last two years uh, straight, is I placed an ad on Craigslist every two weeks. Over the last few months, I have not placed that many ads. Um, it's been a little slower because I've been dealing with my team and my warm market. And um, I've used warm market and Craigslist. And warm market, I use Facebook as a post. I don't do a call to action. I simply post the tours 
Um, I post, um, obviously I have a, an advantage if you want to call it that because I do real estate and therefore I can post about my real estate, but, um, that's a whole nother training or you can call me or you can talk to your five star and they'll explain that, that, that Facebook posting, that attraction marketing. But, um, literally, uh, for the last two years, that has been my marketing, no street signs, no other fishing poles, Craigslist, Facebook posts for, for warm market. And, and my, and my existing warm market and when my, my warm market to me, even though it isn't friends and family, it is coworkers. It is people that I surround myself on a daily basis in my job and my job, just like you, I have a job five days a week where I fix and flip property. And so, um, in that job, I meet people all the time and I constantly invite them to come to events the way I talked about it earlier, right? They see what I'm doing. Um, and so I always ask questions and there's many guys that I've been, that have watched me make money that I ask questions about and then they say they're interested and they don't come. It just is part of the world. But um, if you commit to this, I, I, if, you, if you do, you know, we just had the, the, the 200 list. I, I can't stress enough how important that list is. When I got five star qualified, you guys, I wasn't even looking to market, but I needed help and I needed money and I needed it fast, right? Real estate was not fast in 2008. And so I literally went to everybody I knew in warm market. I had 12 warm market people attend a meeting over the course of 45 days. And my, my intrigue was short sales because back then it, everything was being short sold. And so uh, they came and they saw the information and four people enrolled, four people. And I got five star qualified and I made 20 grand and that 20 grand actually saved my butt because I needed money so badly and I hadn't made any money in almost four months. Um, and, and that warm market that Bob was talking about that Ron put up on the screen before this and that you've heard about that 200 list. It's, it's the number one way I think that you can, you can launch, you can finish out your 2018 and start your 2019. It's the number one way that you can go back and start over no matter how long you've been doing this into the drive contest and put yourself to win in that contest. And then you supplement it with cold market of some sort. If there, when Michael talks about one-on-one -on -one conversations and he's having them every other day, every day, twice a day, um, if you're not doing one-on-ones with your five-star or if you're already five-star and you're not doing one-on-ones on your own, then you're, you're, you're missing out. Then you're not getting enough people on the phone and driving enough people to the meeting. And I know you all know that. We, are, we all know how to do it or, or what needs to be done. We just don't necessarily always remember how. But my point is, is that um, uh, next week, I think I'll, I'll spend the whole time training on this, which is, um, which is, how you can tie in a cold market with a warm market to get to where you want to go. And, um, and uh, it will lead to a team and then your team will have warm market. Your team will have cold market. Your team will be bringing you individuals to work with that you'll have one-on-ones and then you have your own direct sales. And ultimately you'll see the uh, multiple five figure months that you want but you can't ever and ever, ever learn how to quit. You can never learn how to quit the marketing business and you've got to spend time in your education and in implementing it. Um, and it's got to be both. Okay. You guys, I got 901. I respect your time. I love everybody on the phone. Uh, Manuel, you're very, very welcome. I'm blessed as well. I really greatly appreciate this. Thanks for hanging on the line, you guys. Thanks for uh, being here. Make it a great day. Uh, you got my cell phone number seven six zero five three 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 one four one. If you're not on the if you're on the phone seven six zero five three 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 one four one. Feel free to reach out to me. Make it a great day. Thanks for giving me the opportunity to uh, to talk to you guys. I can't tell you how much it means to me and how much I appreciate it. With that, I'll end the meeting. And everybody have a blessed week. Uh, happy holidays. Let's make it a great uh, December. Lots to still do. See you guys. Thanks, folks. Hera, thank you. Muriel, thank you. David, thank you. You guys are so welcome. Um, I just, I just appreciate you guys so much. It's awesome.
And Chris White, thank you, buddy, for a great training. Michael and Christian, always thank you very much for the opportunity to be on this call. You guys are great. See you tomorrow. Thanks, David. Hey, LaShawn, uh, he's doing well. Thank you. You were asking about my brother-in-law. That's awesome. Yeah, he is. Um, he's good. He's surviving. Um, he's quit smoking, which is good. They ha still haven't started smoking again, so that's good. Um, I'm not sure he's. Uh, I'm not sure he's changed his diet all that much yet, but um, but things are going in the great in the right direction. His heart is now functioning at about 45 percent, so it's getting better. Thank you very much for asking. Um, that means a lot to me. Love you guys. Have a great day, everybody. Uh, you got my number, 760-533-3141. Feel free to reach out. Make it a great day. David, yeah, man, I'll do lunch anytime you want. Just call me. Text me. You're welcome, brother. Bye, guys. Make it a great day.